Continuation to the Good Friday service. Is we uh, even though we know all of us know about resurrection and all that, we believe in that. And but still it's good to remember again and again the word of God is all the time new and brings new revelation to us. Even though how many times you read the same word, but every time is it, when you read it, it again something new comes. That's what the work of the Holy Spirit. So it never ends. You know, through our whole lifetime, the word of God is every time fresh and alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look to the word. Um, see, um, death could not stand Jesus. Amen. Right? Because... His love uh, triumphed everything. Hallelujah. You know, so sin could not stand him. Death Amen. could not stand him. Amen. So <clears throat> even the sin, our sin was upon him. Uh, but his love for us triumphed our sin. Hallelujah. So do you get something out of it? Amen. His love for us triumphed our sin. Even the whole human beings, their sin was laid upon him, but that sin could not do anything to Jesus. Jesus only overcame all that sin. How he overcame is his love for us. Hallelujah. His love, with love he overcame. His love for us overcame sin. And therefore, because of the sin, uh, he had to take our death also. So, but that also, his love for us overcame our death. Hallelujah. So love is greater than sin. Amen. Love is so stronger and powerful than death. Amen. So that's what, what do you get out of it today? That's how God made a way for us to triumph sin in this world. That's how we can overcome sin and death with the love, his love. So that's what, that's what needed today. When you um, move, walk, live your life in the love of the Savior, His love is going to pour out into your hearts today. And that love can triumph every problem in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That love, with that love, you can overcome. You know, you can pull your children away from the sin, away from the clutches of Satan. That love of the Savior the love of the Savior, let the love of the Savior can flow into your hearts. Sir. So your children's sin cannot do anything. Your love for them is greater than their sin. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? Your love for your children, your love for your loved ones is more stronger and more greater than their sin. Nothing can stand against the love of God. You know, that's what happened when, when he was on the cross, you know. The religious people were all uh, onto him, throwing stones at him and shouting at him, saying that crucify, crucify. All those sins they were committing and, you know, um, the punishment given him, whipping, everything, spitting on him and pulling the beer. Everything what they were doing to him that day, that the, but his love for them is not shaken. No matter what they're doing to him, but his love for them is not shaken at all. That's why he could pray on that, on that cross. He prayed like this. Father, they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. Hallelujah. See, that his love for them made them to get saved. And the same people got saved. You know, the people who shouted, crucified, the same people gathered on the Pentecost day when, when disciples gathered and prayed that day when the Holy Spirit came upon them. Those people were gathered and they were touched. And they asked Peter, what shall we do now? Who prayed for them? Jesus prayed for them. When he was on the cross, his love 
for them, chasing them to get saved. Hallelujah. His love for them continued through disciples. That love continuously poured out upon those people. And I'm telling you, any kind of people, any rebellious people, whoever hurting you, whoever persecuting you, any kind of rebellious people, there is a hope today. Your love for them is greater than their sin. Sin has to bow down to the love of the Savior. Amen. Scripture, uh, let's see Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. You know actually the world sin was ruling. <coughs> How that sin entered into the world through one man, Adam. Because of Adam's decision, wrong decision, sin entered into the world. And even people want to sin, do not want to sin, doesn't matter, beloved. Sin is ruling. Sin was ruling from Adam because he opened the door for sin to come in. And once sin came into the world, sin started ruling everybody, everybody. That's why, because that sin started ruling and death came to everybody. Today, every human being will die, right? There is no such thing. Every man will die. Why? Death is ruling to all human beings because sin is ruling. Because of sin, death came to human beings. But God's original intention for mankind is not death. When he created Adam, he never planned Adam to die. But death came because of Adam's decision. But it was not in the plan of God. You know, so the sin is ruling and death started ruling all. So every man dying means what? It means sin ruled every man. Today no one can say, oh, some so-and-so person is holy. So-and-so person is never committed sin. No. Because every person, every human being will die in this world. It means sin is ruling every person. That's why death is ruling every person. Hallelujah. So that's what it says. Through one man sin came. And because of sin, death came. You know, um, so, but for Jesus, sin could not rule him. Death could not rule him. Hallelujah. So what happened? And he, even though he, he took the body of Adam, he has the body of Adam, but still he was sinless. And because he was sinless, death could not hold him. So those three days, was what happened is he died for three days, right? Those three days, death and his love fighting. There was a war going between love and death. His love for us and death. Our death is fighting, fighting. But finally, what triumphed? What, what won is love. Hallelujah. So, you know, so he is the first man in this earth who risen from the dead. Before him, there was nobody. He is the first human being who defeated death is Jesus Christ. You know, before, that's why he's called, he's the first fruit. He's the first, first fruit among who died. You know, you might say that I used to think of Lazarus also risen from the dead, you know. And in the Old Testament, Elijah, in the Elijah time and Elisha time, they raised up dead people too. But what, what was that? But they died again. Lazarus rose up and died again, right? All those people who were risen, they died again. So, death, so only Jesus, only Jesus he rose again. He defeated the death. And that's once he defeated the death, death cannot have him again. So there's no death 
for him again. He's sleeping forever. Once he defeated that, he lives forever. That's why he's the first fruit among human beings who defeated death, who broke the death and risen and lives forever. So then what about the people who died before Christ, all the saints of God, Abraham from Abraham, all the saints of God who died before Christ, were they risen? No, they were not risen that time. Jesus, they had to wait till Jesus rises. From that time, whoever dead, whoever dead in God, like in Christ, they expressed their faith in Jesus by, by giving sacrifice of the lamb to God. They express their faith in Jesus. That's why today no one can be saved without believing in Jesus. Jesus is the only way to get saved, to come to Father, right? So those time, those that time, Abraham, Moses, all the saints of God, alive, all the saints of God, they were all expressed their faith in the coming of the Lord Jesus by giving sacrifice, the lamb sacrifice. Lamb represent the Son of God. That's why whoever, whoever followed that law of Moses, that giving sacrifice, that's why every year they were bringing the lamb and every year they have to go there and the tabernacle, they need to appear there and the, uh, the high priest, behalf of all the people congregation, he was taking that, that, uh, that sacrifice, their blood, the blood of the lamb, and behalf of them, he was going into the most holy place and appearing before God for them. So whoever followed all that, they were all saved, but they were not risen before the Christ. They were all kept at a place in, called in hell. They were kept, but separated from the demons, but they still were kept in the hell only. That's what we can see the word uh, there. Um, Luke chapter 16. Okay, before that, let's see this first fruit, about first fruit. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. But now Christ is the risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Whoever fallen asleep before Christ, they were not first fruit. Jesus is the first fruit. Still, they were dead that time. And they were in the, okay, let's see now. Luke chapter 16, verse 22, 23. In this story, when Jesus was saying that story, this story, uh, the beggar died. You know that story, right? About the beggar and the rich man. And the beggar was sitting at the, at the gate of the rich man every day begging, right? But the rich man did not care. And he had all riches enjoying the pleasures, having good food, having feast. But he did not care that poor man. But both of them, the time came, both of them died. But the rich, this rich man gone to the hell. But this poor man gone to the hell only, but not where these um, demons, the, they, they, had, they, they were kept. But there he is with Abraham. He seated with Abraham. That's what Jesus was telling that story. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, the rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So they, they, they're able to see each other. So this, uh, um, this uh, rich man who gone to the hell, to the Hades, the torment place, but Abraham and the, and the saints of God, they were not in the tormented place. They were far off. But they could see each other. And then, 
you know that story right and there were uh, that rich man was asking jesus okay you go for that please 24 24 25 26 same same chapter look chapter 6 then he said to them of No. 16. 16. Now he was asking, yeah. Then he cried and said, "Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame." That rich man was crying out to Abraham because he was seeing Abraham there and asking, "Can you please send that that beggar name is Lazarus?" Can you please send Lazarus to me? Just dip a, you know, just drop of water because I'm tormented here. No water. There's hot. There's thirsty there. You know. So then he's saying, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and like was Lazarus, uh, evil things. But now he's comforted and you are tormented. Then. Yeah, and besides all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot nor can those from there to pass to us you know that's how they were kept in a place and after jesus risen i showed this story just to let you know that they were kept in a place but not in the torment but they can see each other so that's why they was asking you know and uh, here so jesus is the first fruit he's risen so what happened to them after he risen actually they all of those people who were there abraham everybody they risen after that that's why he says you know uh, matthew chapter 27 was 52 after his resurrection On the third day, when Jesus risen, what happened? And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Did you see that? After Jesus risen, everybody was released. How can anybody be released before Jesus defeat our death? because death was ruling everybody after jesus defeated the death after his risen everybody could rise and tombs were opened and many saints was risen were raised and gone to paradise and when jesus risen when he's risen God did not like it. He was not raised with the same body how he buried. When he was when he is risen, he he got a new body, a new and powerful body. It's a different body he received, not the same body. You know that's the reason. Even that 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 a big stone was kept. at the tomb he the powerful body is not the same flesh and blood that's why he could come out that took that uh, um, in, not only that when disciples were gathered in a room also the doors were closed what day after his resurrection jesus appeared in the room how he could walk through the walls through the doors this is he had got a different body is a powerful body no walls can stand no doors can stand nothing can stand is a such a powerful body he received after after his resurrection he remained on the earth for 40 days to give them enough proof that i am risen i'm not in the tomb anymore I overcame death. Wow. To give them enough proof, he still remained on the earth for forty days. He keep appearing to them and disappearing them. Sometimes when they were eating uh, bread, fish, he was there. 
He sat with them. He ate with them. And not only that, he was teaching them. He taught them the scriptures. And disciples, they got the revelation. Suddenly, their eyes, spiritual eyes were opened. They could understand everything because he was teaching them. Hallelujah. And then this body, when Jesus received that body, that body is not like the body of Adam anymore. When, when before the fall of Adam, Adam had a body. It was a perfect body. But still, Satan could mess up with that body, right? Satan could tempt that body. But this Jesus, after resurrection, he didn't have that body anymore. Satan did not know about this body anymore. You understand? Satan could mess up with Adam's body, but this body Jesus received is different body. Satan did not know about this body at all. No idea. This body, he overcame Satan, he overcame death, he overcame sin, and this body. That's why he's not called as a, he's not called as second Adam anymore. After his resurrection, the word is saying not Adam because before his resurrection, the word is saying that he is the last Adam. The word says first Adam, he is the last Adam. Why? Because after resurrection, Adam done. After resurrection, no more Adam. No more Adamic body anymore. No more Adamic nature anymore. This one is different. You know, first Corinthians, he, this body is different. This nature is different. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47 to 49. The first man was of the earth, made of dust, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust, and as is the heavenly man made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. This man is called heavenly man. He did not have Adamic body anymore. He did not have Adamic nature anymore. So he is in the image of heaven, heavenly man. A man from heaven. So that's what he's saying. We are all born of this man. We are born of this heavenly man. So that's why he's saying, before we born to Adam, so we received the nature of Adam. But now, we are born to this heavenly man. So we shall bear the image of heavenly man. Is it a good news for you? Is it a good news? Amen. Hallelujah. See, and also that, he appeared to them there is another reason also for disciples to believe that he's risen so that, so that they will be born again. Why? Every person who believes that Jesus is risen, every person who believes that Jesus is alive, they are risen with Christ. Amen. How did it happen? Let's see the word. Romans chapter 6, verse 5. For we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly, we also shall be 
in the likeness of his resurrection. You understand? When he died, when he died, you were there with him that day. That day. How? Because he, when he died, your sin was upon him that day. Even though you were not born from the beginning to the end of the earth, end of the age, all human beings' sins were upon him. So even though you were not born, you were, your sins were upon him that day when he died. That's what he's saying. When you united with him in death, that's why you were united. Because you were sins were upon him. United with him in death. Then suddenly, you are united with him in resurrection. Hallelujah. When you died, he died. When he died, you died with him. You understand? When he died, you died with him. When he is risen, you risen with him. That's why it is important for you to believe that Jesus is risen. Every person who believes Jesus is risen, you risen with him. Amen. That's why today, because you are risen, you don't die. That's what Jesus is saying. Everybody who believes in him will not perish. They have eternal life. You don't die, but your body dies. You understand? You are a spirit. You are, you are spirit. You have a body. You live in the body. You don't die, but your body dies. That's why today, and are you going to die? No. Our body dies. Our body is the one which goes into the tomb, but we don't go to the tomb. We don't go to the tomb. That's why today, you know, when, when somebody asked me when I go back, when I went to India, let's go to the tomb of your father and see in the cemetery. I said, no, my father is not there. He's not there. He's not in the tomb. Why are you searching for people who are not in the tomb? They're not in the tomb. Your body just goes into the tomb and perish and dies. But you don't. You don't go to the tomb. You go there in paradise. Amen. In paradise. That's why Jesus is saying those who are in Christ, there's no death God for them. They live eternally. That's why, you know, when Peter, after they got that revelation about resurrection, when, when disciples believed, when disciples believed in Jesus is risen, they become bold after that. They got such a, they become bold. That's why before Peter had fear of death, that's why he denied Christ. But after his resurrection, when, when they were convinced fully that Jesus is risen, he's not there. Then Peter became very bold. And the same fearful Peter boldly preached the gospel in front of the people who crucified Christ for them to preach the gospel. Why? Because they know they don't die. They know. That's why they're very fearless. When they're very recklessly, they went everywhere in dangerous places. They just went bold because they knew they don't die. People could only kill your body, but they cannot kill you. They cannot kill you. At last, what Satan can do? Maybe harass your body, kill your body. He can't touch you. That's why Jesus said, don't be afraid of the people who can only do harm to your body, but not your soul. They can't do anything. 
Disciples lost the fear of death. Disciples lost the fear of death because of this resurrection. And then, other thing, when he when he is risen, when he is risen, what is, where is he? The word of God says, he is seated. He is seated far above. It means, when he is risen, you are risen. When he is seated there, with the father at the right hand, where are you? You are seated with him. How did this revelation? That's how the revelation they got about seated with Christ. You know, uh, let's see that. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you see that? Just all this happened only with faith. When you believed in Jesus, you only have to do, he, you have to believe he crucified, he died, have to believe he's risen, that's all. By believing this, what did you receive? You are risen with him. You died with him. You risen with him. You seated with him. Amen. Everything happened. Did you do anything to earn all this? You did not even start a journey in Christ. You didn't even start doing something good for him. Nothing even happened yet. Only that day when they believed in Jesus, everything happened. The day they believed in Jesus, they died with him, they risen with him, they seated with him. Amen. Hallelujah. So now, in, the, in your spirit, you are risen with him. Amen. You are seated with him. Right? It means, what does it mean? It means, you are have the power seated represent authority. You have the power and authority with Christ above every power in this world and every authority in this world. Amen. You have power to rule every other power. Hallelujah. You have authority to rule every other authority. Amen. You are above. Amen. That's what Amen. it means. Amen. Seated with him means. That's the meaning of it. Right? And then it means, and also it means, the power, how much it needs to rise above the power of the enemy. That much power is at hand. Amen. That much power is at your disposal. God kept that power for you to use it. God kept that power at your disposal. That's what it means. That's what it, okay, let's see. Um, Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Through his spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. You are you're now, you are, when you are saved, when you believed in, Christ, in Jesus, your spirit is connected with his spirit. You are in Christ now. You and Christ will not be separated. You are in Christ. You become one with Christ. Right? So you become one with Christ and then his now, whenever you, you speak about spirit, it means you and his spirit become one. Whenever we talk about spirit, it means his spirit. His spirit, because you become one with him. Okay? And then, the, if the spirit of him who raised from the dead dwells in you, you know, who, who he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life 
life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. You know what? He had to go in that in the third three days of his um, is a uh, buried and he when he went the word says he went into the uttermost part of the hell like you know the bottom the of the pit of the hell he went because he had to go to that place because of the sins of this world everybody's sin made him to go to that place so even he went there and but his love is greater right but you know what to raise him up from that place and to the place to the father to go to the father to rise above everything and sit there how much power is needed for him to come up from that stage that much power, Holy Spirit God released to raise him up. Amen. What is saying that? That same power is in you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since you are in Christ, since you are in Christ, the power Holy Spirit God has to release to raise up Jesus from the pit of the hell and to go to the Father to be seated there, that much power is working in you Amen. because the same Spirit is living in you. That's why that word says, you are seated with Him now. Why that word is so boldly stated for us? Because of His Spirit living in you. Amen. Because of that power is at your disposal right now. God put that power at your disposal. Amen. Only thing you need to so much millions of dollars in your in your bank account. But every time when you cash it, you need to put that bank card to cash the money, right? In the same way, every time when you need a power to overcome your challenges, you need to put your faith. Bank card is your faith. You need to put your faith to draw the power from here to overcome. Amen. But good news is that how much power is available to you? The resurrection power is available. Tell me now. Any sin can put you away? No. Any challenge can put you away? No. Anything in this world can take you away. That's why he said, nothing in this world, no death, no sin, no hell Amen. can ever Amen. separate you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because so much resurrection power is available to you. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, that's why when I will tell you how to live in the resurrection power, how this resurrection power will work in your life. 